Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel for another intuitive painting tutorial. So today I'm just being free with my creativity, imagination, having some paint therapy, join, letting you guys join me um, as I always do. And I'm going to make this step by step as I do this and walk you guys through this um, every single step of the way. So I hope you guys enjoy this one. I'm excited. I hope you are too. If you haven't already, please hit that subscribe. And I'm going to go ahead and get started with the canvas. I've got an 11 by 14 double primed and stretched canvas. I didn't prime it with anything. I purchased it double primed already from the store. The only thing I'm going to do to the canvas just before I add the paint is just get a bit of water on it. Um, getting a little bit of water on the canvas really, really helps it take the acrylic a lot better and now let's go over the paint so I've just picked out my favorite colors um, and you can see my palette's a little messy here I finished up a, a beautiful landscape painting of a seascape for one of my patrons I'll have a link below if you guys want to check that one out I'm accepting uh, photos um, personally taken from my patrons making tutorials, rendering them for them, and sending them the original painting as a thank you gift. So I've got neon yellow cool, neon orange, neon pink, blue turquoise, a little bit of Mars black, light blue violet, and some titanium white. Let's go ahead and get started. The first thing I think I want to do is start making um, the sky with, well, the first thing I'm going to do is get my canvas a little bit wet. I almost forgot that step. So I'm just taking a number 30 filbert brush, adding a little bit of water, like I mentioned, to the canvas because with acrylic, it can be a little bit difficult to spread acrylics um, and blend them nice and smoothly. But I'll tell you guys a little trick here. Save yourself some money. You don't need to purchase any mediums. Um, if you, you can, if you want to, but however, I think just a little bit of water on the canvas uh, really, really helps. So a little bit of water here and there throughout the process of the painting as well. I always let you guys know if and when and how much water I'm picking up on my brush every time I do that. Before this can have any uh, chance to dry, I'm going to go ahead right in to my blue violet. I want to paint something really, really dramatic for a sky today. So I'm kind of just intuitively going to add the colors maybe make it look a little iridescent just a little bit of blue go all the way around the canvas with it looks a little streaky but I'll show you how we're gonna fix that so you'll be learning a lot of little tips and tricks along the way and I welcome you guys to paint along you can share my videos on my channel with uh, any painting groups you like you guys can all paint along Add a little bit more here. So already, just by the way, I'm painting it like this. See these streaks going like this? It's kind of giving me a, a feeling of maybe some sun rays. Okay, take a little bit more. I think I want it to be a little bit heavier. Okay, I'm just going to show you guys a tip. Use a dry, soft mop brush, no water or anything on it, and to just kind of make those streaks disappear, kind of airbrush it. It's a quick and easy way to do that. really softens everything. Okay, now I'm going to come in and add some turquoise in. Blue, this is blue turquoise in with my blue violet. I'm going to do the same thing, come in with a dry mop brush, soften, soften, soften. It already looks pretty soft on the left side. And 
And I think I want to have I think I want to have some light in here and some clouds. So with a damp filbert brush, you can use any brush you want. I'm just gonna show you guys another really neat little tip and trick here. We can gently take off the first few layers of paint. Now I'm going to get a much brighter effect with my sun by taking off and exposing the original canvas rather than going over with white paint later on. So I'm just going to kind of wiggle around here. You can take it off in any shape you want. It's a really, really super fun technique. I mean, look at the light effect we've created already just by doing that. And we've only just begun here. You can come in and add a few more light areas. You could use a Q-tip as well. There's lots of different brushes and things you can use. Had a little drip there. Whenever I have little drips or what we consider mistakes or accidents, I always trust that they're meant to happen because some of the best little accidents or mistakes I've made turn out to be the highlight points of my painting and where I've really taken it in a unexpected or um, unexpected direction, completely transforming what I was originally going to paint. So I kind of get excited when I have those little drips and little things happen in my paintings because I know that um, it's about to take on another life and another direction okay I think I'm gonna leave it like this I'm just gonna come in with some white and go over my white canvas with white and then I'm gonna gently just pull and flick Some soft sun rays. Okay, so that'll be a little start. another little bit of a cloud there. So the next thing I want to do is dry this off and then I think I'll come in with, a, I'm going to add a little bit more depth by coming in with some gray and then just build up layers and layers perhaps make it look a little iridescent, some type of rainbow. Um, but let's see, let's see what happens and how this transforms. Okay, so I think this is pretty dry. 
If there's any little drips that are still there, they might come off. If that happens, it'll end up kind of exposing the cans underneath and it'll look like stars. So I wonder if that's gonna happen. With my number 30 filbert brush, I'm gonna take some black, just place it over here with a little bit of white. So I know I wanna make gray. If you happen to pick up a little bit of your turquoise, that's fine. You can always tint your grays with any color. That's a whole other tutorial on how to create different looking shadows. So I have a little bit of gray on my brush now. Just take a little bit more and make it a, a shade darker than that. I don't want to have too, too much paint on my brush or water. So I think I'm going to start in here and see how this goes. I'm just going to do a very thin layer. And then I want to come in, come inside here and add I don't know how this is looking through your screen that you're watching this on, but actually looks pretty cool and intense against the highlights that we've got, the break in the clouds. going to go around partially over that blue. And a little bit more black and turquoise. some depth. A little bit softer on this side though. Now with my filbert brush I'm going to add a little bit of uh, white and some neon yellow, neon orange, a little bit more warmth there. A little bit more on the peachy side. And let's just come inside this cloud. Might need a little bit more white in there to cut that blue so that it doesn't dry green. Well, that's pretty. Let's go with that. Just keep working a little bit of that warmth out of there. I think maybe I'll just add a little bit of pink too. I'm gonna pick up just a little bit of water. bit more of my pink peach mixture with a bit of white. A few shades lighter, so just adding some more white. I'm going to add a few more layers 
of clouds around here. A little bit more pink. I just want to bring in a little bit more warmth and just a bit of filtering. So you can travel around with your brush. A bit more orange, a little bit of yellow. Let's just add a little hint, a little wiggle and squiggle here and there to create some more light effects in our clouds. Some people just starting to paint think they need to be really, really careful and really, really take their time. But it's not true. You can just be in the moment, feel free, and just dance along your canvas with your brush. And that I find just gives you the most natural looking organic skies. Ones that you haven't pre-planned or sketched out. Okay, I'm gonna take a little bit of white with my gray. Rinse my brush out. And just very lightly go over with a bit of water. Little bit of blue, that turquoise and the white. So you can add little rays peeking through these little cracks and breaks in the clouds. come back maybe with a little bit of let's make a deep purple with this neon pink and turquoise and then add a little bit more depth So you just get really close to that white. You're gonna create lots of dramatic contrast this way. And that's just with some neon pink and blue turquoise. Depending on how much you use of each, the shade you make will vary. And if you don't need a whole lot of paint on your brush, one of the biggest mistakes beginners make is thinking they need to take a big scoop of paint. Just going to come in between these clouds and create a few more layers.
I'm going to add it all to the bottom until I work it out of my brush and then it gets a little bit softer. Now I want to come in and start adding um, a little bit more color, perhaps a little bit of iridescence. So I'm going to take with a clean brush, white and yellow. And I'm using neon lemon yellow, but you can use any yellow you want. This is a cool yellow. So depending on what shade temperature of yellow you're using, your outcome will be a different. into my pink, the white, you get a really pretty bubblegum paint color. And I'm just going to dry brush, sort of scumble. So just wiggling, moving around with my brush without taking it off the canvas. little hints of that pink peeking through between the cloud sections here. And then maybe a little bit of that iridescent yellow as well. can add a little bit of orange and white. Add these little wiggly half circles. I'm going to soften that, take one of my dry mop brushes, and just dust around little circles like that. And I'll take some more white, really close to the darkest part of my clouds. I'll add a few clouds, kind of trailing off. So little wiggles. And I'm going to add 
little bit of color to them, a little bit of pink. Wash my brush out. Mix up some yellow. Add a bit more orange in there. back over to some more pink. I just want to tone this yellow a bit because I know that when it dries it might look more green. And with a damp 30 filbert brush, I'm going to make these clouds look a little blurry. Bit of turquoise with my neon yellow, blue turquoise, and white. to get an idea of where I want to take this painting. So stay with me guys. It's about to get really exciting. Make a little bit of soft yellow and I'm going to add with my bar up or canvas out of the easel. And a little bit more white. bit of orange. And I'm going to sweep. Make it a little bit blurry. Take a little bit of my black paint and a small filbert brush. And I know this is scary, but this is exciting for me. I'm going to add about two inch long 
strip that slightly goes up and we're going to add a little bit of a diagonal angle to it right there and it comes down diagonally towards the bottom we're going to add a little reflection skinny line for the mast if you haven't guessed already we're adding a sailboat and then a line down to the tip of the boat So this is the sail that's down. Just a few little lines right there. I want to just make it look like Well, it's sort of mirrored here, so I'm going to come down and do a very light reflection in the water. So just try your best to, to mirror it as well as you can, but you know, because it's in the water, it's going to be a little blurrier, a little softer looking. You don't have to be so exact. Then I'm going to take a little bit of white. You can tint it with some of your um, pastel colors if you want. Add a little bit to the top of the boat. A little bit to the bottom. Thank you. 
just want to make sure this black really stands out against all those colors in that sky. And I think I'll just add a few small birds in the sky and then call it done. Could add a few little stars too, maybe we'll see. I've got a really small liner brush, a little bit of water. And we're just gonna add a few little birds like that. Keep it really simple. I want to add a little bit of something in the water too. Now just before I call this done, I think it would be neat to add some lights inside. I'll create a few little windows here. So just with some white or warm colors, we have the pink, orange, yellow. I'll just add a few little depth like that. Make those a little more subtle. Okay, finally some white and yellow. A little bit of yellow and pink and we'll just add a little bit down there. Okay, and then I'm just gonna soften. Okay, well, I'm going to call this painting all done. This was really fun. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this come to life. Feel free to paint along. You can check out links down below for Patreon, um, our Facebook group, Instagram, and for a full list of the colors I used for this painting today. Take care, everybody. See you soon in my next video. Bye!